Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Empires and Puzzles video. And in this video, I want to test out what I'm assuming is Ziamara, uh, the latest of the OP heroes. There's always a new emerging OP hero that makes the previous one look not quite so good. If you're getting frustrated with Empires and Puzzles, let me just say that Gemstone Legends probably has the things you're looking for. They have a mercy system that guarantees a legendary hero after a certain amount of pulls, and we're not just talking about a weak legendary hero from a pre-selected list. They have a wish list that you can put any hero in the game on to boost your chances of pulling that specific hero. They take into account player feedback, and many of the changes that have gone live in the game were based on player feedback or were player suggestions to begin with. They're even going to give you a free $50 starter bonus just for downloading from one of the links in the description. If the earlier stuff somehow wasn't enough, you can be a hero in wars, even just using rare heroes only. They have tons of events that allow you to earn free ten pulls and other very usable high value stuff. Gemstone Legends really has a lot going for it, so come check it out if you're curious to see why tens of thousands of people have left Empires and Puzzles to come play. Interesting that they went with the War of Three Kingdoms or the Journey Family, I think it's called. Uh, passive but not the mono one, which is interesting. So they gave a scaled down version. Um, family bonus, one hero. All received attack status ailments will be replaced by plus 40% with one plus 60. So 100% of attack down ailments are received, guaranteed to be uh, replaced by an increased attack buff for three turns. Interesting. Um, increasingly, I mean, they're just running out of runway here for what you can possibly do. Um, I just fought a team recently in war that had the Yukonin tank um, with Hippo on the left flank and Aramis on the right flank. You cannot dispel the buffs. You cannot steal the buffs, I don't think. This is where the terminology gets a little weird. This is a tangent, but they have steals, lifts, and the term they use is um, immune to dispels and reallocation. So unclear if stealing counts as a reallocation. It technically would be because it's being taken and put somewhere else, which is a reallocation. But what I'm trying to say is they keep limiting the amount of things you can do to these heroes. You can't lower their attack. So I guess you have to then boost your defense or you have to use taunt. But then a lot of these passive abilities go around taunt and... I don't see where they're going to go with that. They are uh, boxing themselves into a corner here. Anyways, back to the topic of the video. Crazy stats. Just <laughs> crazy that we're at this point with stats. Um, so average speed, a little bit more limited to defense. Um, I've said this a lot before, but sometimes that third match on offense just doesn't come and you don't get to use those average speed heroes. So fast is a significant advantage. Um, but average speed, it's going to be more of a defensive oriented hero, I think. However, if you have her, probably should try to use her on offense. Deals 300% damage to all enemies. Very strong damage for average speed, considering what else she has going on. That's kind of a bit ridiculous. I think the new, um, elemental hero that came out for the last red elemental portal was 300 damage to all and did nothing else, I think. Also at average speed, uh, I believe that is the case. There was something else to it, but I mean, just look what else is going on here. This is unbelievable. The caster gets additional plus 100% power for the next special skill they cast. The additional power increases 25% each turn up to a maximum of 200%. Uh, so we're going to have to try to see what that looks like at 200%. Um, if we run out of rematches and can't do it, there's it's possible that someone in a friendly raid will have this. So this might be a longer one, um, but I want to make sure I demonstrate all of this. It might be short as well. I don't, I don't really know. It just depends how well this works out. And then the kicker on top of this, all enemies receive mana corruption for four turns. It's a new ailment that we haven't seen before until this point. Each time an afflicted enemy receives mana from an additional source, they receive 250 damage. That is punishing. Additional sources include direct mana addition from special skills, status effects, uh, I guess like passive mana gain status effects, level properties, 
not going to be that relevant. Um, passive skills, family effects, tile effects, so like the uh, tiles that give increased mana generation, and minions that give mana, which I think is maybe just Inari. Mana added for defense team at the end of their turn or from matching tiles is included only if the target has a mana generation buff. So they're not punishing standard mana gain, but everything above and beyond that is punished. Uh, it doesn't block the mana gain, it just gives you a lot more damage. So using this on offense, it's only going to matter in charging your heroes if you have a mana buff and if you have this ailment. So obviously you're going to want to try to block this ailment, so cleanses and ailment immunity are as strong as they ever were but that is a shitload of stuff going on uh, even at average speed and then you've got this character recovers five percent health when they receive a buff and then just um what is the percent chance 35 percent percent chance to resist any negative mana effects and effects that prevent the use of special skills um also with ail ailment immunity as a uh, ether ability so just ridiculous and this might sound like a conspiracy theory but um, I've had a lot of experience with newer heroes seeming to do th the things they do at a higher percentage than advertised um, you know heroes that withstand even though that's only a 30% chance they withstand everything in a row or um, the uh, green sniper on defense Sha Wu Jing his dodge feeling like 90 percent dodge or something like that and i've seen that with mana shield as well i was fighting against gestalt on defense and i tried multiple times in a row to stop him and he's just like nope so you waste your special skill and you don't stop them so i imagine this will be no different we'll see i don't know what team i want to go with here um we could go with this it has a lot of mana buffs so we'll get to see that in action um, it also allows me to kill a side decently well, which could help keep her alive to demonstrate what this 200% power over a 300% uh, damage special skill looks like. So let's try this, and uh, we can go a different route if need be. People have said they're getting bored of this team or just want to see me attack with other teams. Um, easier said than done with the current state of the game, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll give this a try and then see how it goes. All right, does she heal? Yep, an additional 129 over the 700 or something that she gained. So, we can use Hathor as a bit of a tile dump, but we'll have to pay for it later by, uh, needing to undo all this healing that we've given them. Kind of a shit board here. A lot of yellows. All right, well, she's charging up for the first hit at least. Oh, he's dead. All right, so we won't do our increased defense because uh, we want to see what this looks like naturally. I'm guessing 600s. Oh, damn. Higher than that. So now we've got each time we, re we <laughs> receive mana, uh, which is going to happen with um, forces from his minions. So let's just fully demonstrate that. Um, though it actually would be nice to deal a little damage here. And then Perseus gives a increased mana gen buff. So absolute worst case scenario here. Nothing will happen yet, but once I start matching tiles, it's going to hit me. So there. Oh, you take the damage per fucking tile. Wait, why did she take it three times, but he only took it once? That was a bit weird. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
What the fuck? You take it per tile. Oh, wow. That is fucking insanely overpowered. Insane. That you... (laughs) Wow. So you either block it or you just die. Because it's it's only three turns. It would be... (laughs) No, it's four turns. (laughs) Oh, my God. That is just uh, uh, running out of ways to describe this because they just keep outdoing themselves. You call, you know, Finley was insane at one point and he's just garbage compared to heroes like this. Um, Oh my God, four turns of essentially not being able to make any matches in your color or you will die. Or you just simply cannot bring monogen buffs, which limits you a lot. Or you have to get lucky and block it before it happens. But still, her damage is absurd. This is crazy. Crazy. Uh, Let's try to set her off before we die here. Uh, I forget if special skills or slash attacks happen first. But, oh my god. This isn't even funny anymore. 1640 attack. With no boost whatsoever. Nothing boosting her attack. She has no attack bo- How is that even possible? Oh, because every time the base stats get higher, the troops have a bigger effect. It's like 25% of 100,000 is bigger than 25% of 100. So every time new boost... Uh, every time they boost the stats of new heroes... And then you double limit break them. Your troops have a bigger effect than they did before. So it's an exponential gain as heroes get better. Which is what I mean about them boxing themselves into a corner here. Um, Alright. Holy fucking hell. That is unbelievable. Alright. Here it is with 200% attack. <laughs> uh, what the hell? How can they release something like this in the game? How? All right. <sighs> so, in terms of what she has, I, I the damage is insane, but I, <laughs> I am most struck by how if you have a monogen buff, you pay 250 damage per fucking tile, which means if you match six tiles... After her hit, which is a lot, so say you have a diamond, which is normally a good thing, you're just completely dead at that point. Unless you've healed or blocked the ailment. That is just ridiculous. The amount of heroes that that blocks on offense is not fun anymore. Holy shit. All right. So we we saw what 300 looks like, which is higher than I thought, because her fucking attack stat is just insanely high. Um, this is the kind of hero that would have been a barbarian in the past. They didn't make her a fighter or a ranger. Fighter would be the best. Ranger would be nice because the chance to bypass would mean damage could be massive. Wizard could have been insane with the, uh, the Jinx just completely punishing every type of buff, either mana buffs or everything. Um, Cleric is still strong. It's a it's a tough one in terms of emblems for me. I, I guess that's not the case for everyone, but like most healers are clerics. Anyways, still a very strong class um, because she needs to be stopped and this really impacts your ability to stop her. All right, so we saw 300% damage. We saw what it looked like at full plus 200% power. We saw this mana corruption and I, I just cannot believe... She used to be fast, I think, in beta... And they changed her to average. But I think she only was targeted nearby. And now she's full AoE. Um, But yeah, four turns of that is unbelievable. Because you can't not match for four turns. You're just going to be dead. Um, And if you're not dead, say you have taunt for four turns. You come out of taunt and you survived her ability. She's probably almost charged again, if not fully charged. And you have zero mana at that point. So how can you even survive that? It's, it's so imbalanced. It's absurd. 
Um, but we saw what that looks like. Uh, so there's nothing left to demonstrate except can we beat this team? So um, obviously I brought a terrible team and expressed that beforehand. So we want to go ailment blocking. Uh, let's test the theory as well. I have felt like just the double limit breaks, which I've gone on and on about, I'm not going to go into again except to say that they're such an advantage that I found throwing synergy out the window and just raiding with my double limit broken heroes, as you can see here, had very good win rates compared to my other synergistic teams. So Forces is still here and obviously shouldn't be on the side like that. Um, so there is mana gain from that, which will take his damage, which is a bit risky. Let's see, what? This could be a good one. No, because even if you threw that back with someone like Kitty, you know, instead of just blocking it, you throw it back on the whole team. Uh, on defense, they would have to have a mana buff for this to affect them. Uh, just standard mana gain is not going to affect them. So it's pretty easy to avoid that on defense by just not putting one of those heroes on. So anyways, let's see if we can just go with some of our most powerful heroes and have better luck and then we'll try one where i build a team specifically around countering this team which is very hard to do there's a lot of stuff going on here a ton of speed super dangerous obviously ailment immunity is going to be the most important thing because we have um defense down for four turns tons of fire damage super dangerous attack down and that mana corruption just unbelievable so <laughs> What a trash board here. Oh, God. I'm gonna try to bring something better in here, and that will not work. Yep, let's just charge him up instantly, because I really want to feel the fire. At least we have our taunt still but just this is the blue board i needed last time laughing in my face here okay great gazelle's not ready we got ailment immunity over there on the right side i do have enough purples but i'm going to take some big damage in the meantime she probably has like uh, one turn left. Oh, but then I don't think there's any way of not setting off Hathor, who will block that. Mm. Let's just put this over here. We'll have to take her hit, and maybe we'll get lucky. No, just fucking blues and greens forever. 700, get the fuck out of here. And there's our Mono Corruption. Forces is dead, so that's not really going to impact us, but we are absolutely going to die here as well. Jesus. Man. If you're someone who believes that balance is not just completely in the toilet right now with this game, I want to hear from you in the comments because that's the way I see it. 443 for a slash attack. All right. Fucking hell. We are going to try to counter this. So, we need ailment immunity. Um, she... <laughs> Unfortunately, she also boosts mana as her passive, so decent chance that a lot of damage gets dealt to me. Um, taking out Hathor would be nice for multiple reasons, so maybe we'll go strong blue. And then what else? And then maybe Cleopatra is quite good as well. And then a blue stack that is capable of causing some carnage. 
Um, but it's going to be an average speed blue stack. Alrighty. So we've got a lot of ailment immunity here, a lot of survivability. Um, however, we are weak to their ailment immunity, so we'll see. I, I don't know if I can call that the best team that I could construct uh, around these parameters, but I would call it a good one. Um, if you wouldn't call it a good one, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Uh... Let's do this, set us up for our second blue match and third blue match. All right, we actually have a chance here. Well, by chance, I mean we won this one. Focus here. Okay, well, that goes to show what it takes to win these days. Uh, not to be a complete pessimist, but if you disagree, let me know. I'm open to other people's opinions. Um, but what I mean is, what did it take to win? I needed to have three matches within... What was that? three turns, four turns maximum. I'd say if you go five turns and you have not gotten most of the way charged or some of your heroes charged at least, you're probably going to lose almost 100% of the time against teams like this, which are just pure insanity. Um, again, if you disagree, let me know. I haven't collected any data on that, but that is the impression that I get. All right, no increased defense. What kind of damage? 632. And let's see how hard we can hit back. Um, as always, very much want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, there's some just absurd heroes in the game, and she is one of them. Uh, obviously more of a defensive hero, because again, if she were fast speed, that would just be... That would be... <laughs> I don't even know what words to use anymore. Um, so, a total defensive all-star. Best of the best, perhaps. The best possible hero you could have on defense. Obviously, you wouldn't want to have five of her on defense, though that would be pretty crushing. And what I mean by that is variety on defense is usually a good thing. And, uh, you know, so we have to look at heroes as part of larger synergies. But for an attacker that is very oppressive to um excuse me for a defender that's very oppressive to attackers uh, as an attacking defender she is i'm <laughs> describing her on a defense team in an attacking role and she is very punishing to heroes that are attacking her like me right now um yeah p pure ridiculousness i don't know what more i can say about that we tested everything about her so let me know your thoughts uh, for a little amusement here, let's see what 100% Corruption Core looks like on a single Limit Broken Gelak with a 15% um, attack boost. So he's up, what is she, 1640. He's up at six higher than that, 16-something. Um, and he's going to do 180 with defense down. So he's going to hit, his main hit here is going to be pretty darn big. So yeah, 460 just from the core. Pretty nice. All right, at least we got one win against this ridiculous team, but uh, they can't keep pushing it like this. There's there's, there's going to be nowhere to go. I think there's already nowhere to go, and things are just absolutely absurd. Um, but that's where we're at. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. To any of the stuff that I mentioned, I do like hearing from you guys a lot. Part of why I like doing this channel is the collaborative community aspect. So... Make your voice heard. Chime in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.